Um, I'm really excited for this one. It should be a really great match and all their community work that they've done throughout the week. I think that's been really great. And like I said earlier, that's what this week is all about, is about bringing community together. Maddie Studden is uh, the lady on screen who's going to get us underway. The women's All-Stars match for 2017 is underway. The kickoff taken nicely here now by the Indigenous All-Stars team and Lauren Motlock. That's a nice hard charge up through the middle. Was presented her cap earlier on by a relative of hers in Bo Dela Cruz also playing today. Get up, really keen to get a good solid start are oh. the girls. Oh. Jazzy Allende oh. taking the ball up next. Was a, a late inclusion into this match. And now the skipper, oh Beck Young, tucks the ball under the arm. Try and keep her, keep her out of these games. Beck Riley darts from dummy half. You'll get to see a lot of Becca Riley up through the middle today. Already up over the halfway line. Great start here for the Indigenous All-Stars team. And the Kia Davis-Welsh puts the kick in over the top. Trickles over the sideline. It's a great start for the Indigenous All-Stars team. Yeah, I definitely think that this is going to be a really great match. And having it in these quarters, I think it's going to be really good for the forwards as well to spend some quality time hitting the ball up as much as they can to help out their backs and definitely utilising their backs towards the end of the match. Yeah, see a good solid shot going in there in defence from the women's All-Stars team who now have their first taste of the football deep down into their own end of the field, 10 metres out now from their own line, running away from this southern end. The Heat will certainly play a factor here today. They're playing four 15-minute quarters today, are the girls? You two just, hey, hey, just stand still. Or we'll swap around. Stand still. Head Referee in. trying to take Arms charge over. of the girls earlier on. In. They're looking forward in. to come together. Studden feeds the scrum, but they go down the shorthand side. There's no way through the back for the women's All-Stars team. Remnant will play the football now. They come back down the short side. It's a good, nice run down the left. Just stays in the field of play there from Kelly. Now they come back inside. Some good defence pushing up to slow down the play. A little bit too much over the top that time, though, from Savannah Connors. She's penalised, was uh, the real star of the carnival at the Murray Carnival last year to earn her place here in the women's All-Stars team. And watch her when she gets the ball under the arm. She's got plenty of speed and plenty of skill. Been uh, a real challenge over the years for the Indigenous All-Stars team to defeat this amazing side of the women's All-Stars. They've had plenty of changes to their team as well. Slow to get to a feet there. As Cody House plays the football. Now they go back up through the middle. It's a great solid charge. Eliana Walton is the player. Now they go out through the right. Come back down to the left through Studden. She's got a great short kicking game, but also loves to tuck the ball under the arm as well. Now they go through the right hand side now. Beautiful tackle underneath. Cuts down Renee Kunst in a solid tackle. The co captain for the women's All-Stars team today. She gets up holding her head as well. Deep into the tackle count here now for the women's All-Stars team. They're 30 metres away from the try line. Last tackle sloppy at the back, but she finally gets the ball away. Riggenshaw puts the kick over the top. Coming across is Davis Welsh, but the ball beats her over the sideline. A little bit of a carbon copy of the Indigenous All-Stars first set of six. Same for the women's All-Stars. We've got a good game on our hands here, Tanisha. Yeah, we definitely do, and I think um, seeing the girls, like seeing like Caitlin Moran come back from playing nines this year and playing with the girls, I think that's, sorry, from last week, I think that's really great to see her in that Indigenous side and in more of a leadership sort of role, I guess, this year. Well, I'll tell you, just on that as well, they've really taken that as motivation, the Indigenous All-Stars team, only having one of their girls out of their 18 here playing today, represented in that Jillaroo's team. It's a real motivation for them to show up against a quality opposition today. Still yet to defeat the women's All-Stars team. There's a nice solid run up through the middle. As you mentioned, that's Caitlin Moore and tucking the ball under her arm. Played last week for the Jillaroo's. Got plenty of skill. Here's Phillips. There's the pass away now to Davis Welsh. Comes at the defence. There's three in there to bring it aground. And they mean business today, both these teams. There's Pilly who ducks out from dummy half. Brings the ball back inside. 35 out now from their own line are the Indigenous team. There's a great run through the middle there. Kennedy puts the ball under arm. Or ball almost stripped out of her hands. But she takes the tackle. Great work there from Candy Kennedy. Down the right side now. Phillips puts the kick over the top. Almost handled nicely by Bremner. But puts it down. It's gone backwards. Play on now. And Allende comes up with a very nice tackle to put pressure on Bremner. 
In fact, it wasn't. It was, in fact, Simone Smith who made the tackle. Had a chance to sit with Simone's family today, Tanya and Vince, at the presentation, and really proud of their girl who was the Group 3 Player of the Year up there for the Port City Breakers in uh, the mid-north coast of New South Wales. Karina Brown, a real try scorer. Watch out for her. Here comes Amelia Cook now up the middle. Playing these 15-minute quarters. The girls don't have much time to shine. They've really got to rip in. He's studding with that great boot of hers. Davis Welsh gets the ball end over end. Also going back there is Connors. Oh, she may have touched it there, Davis Welsh, and she has. Could be a big mistake coming here from the fullback, Davis Welsh. Comes up, puts, puts the hand. Savannah Connors also there around the play. She was, she was pretty casual about it, wasn't she, Tanisha? Yeah, she was. And I think it is, at the end of the game, I think it's the one percenters that really do win or lose games. So, But I know that they can get back on top of it and a big set of defence here. And there's Savannah Connors, who came back also to try and help out Nakia Davis-Welsh. She's uh, a real speed to that Savannah. Lovely young lady as well. And uh, she really wants a full career out of the game of rugby league. The game is taking off so fast every day. We see great leaps forward for women's rugby league. Natasha Gale Nines as well happening at the moment. And these girls really leading the way at the top of the tree of women's rugby league. Cook now will play the ball. Here's a short run getting out from Isabel Kelly. Goes across field. Setting up things nicely now, the women's all-stars team. Just 10 metres shy of the try line. Can they post the first points here in the all-stars clash? Nice duck out there from Britt Braley. Now they go back to the left-hand side. Kelly's got the ball. She reaches out, but I don't think she can get the ball down. She's come up with a knock on there. A real lost opportunity for the women's All-Stars team. Could have had the first try, but she just couldn't hold on to the football. Yeah, it definitely was. And I think it was that support that come around the back that actually stopped that try. So that's really important as well to back your teammates up. Yeah, they really did well to get their hands down on the play. The girls from the, the women's All-Stars team. Might have been Molly O'Connell getting the hands in there on the football. Here's Davis Welsh now. Made that little mistake earlier on, and now she's going to try and make up for it. Now they come back through the middle. Beautiful run there. That's a hard one from Brioni Livingston. Trimmed down plenty to take her part here in the All-Stars match. And speaking with Dean Witters, the coach of uh, this All-Stars team, they've come up with another mistake there as Livingston puts the ball down there on the foot of the women's All-Stars player. Steph Hancock was in there at the front. Also in there too, making a presence known was Tasman Gray. And it looks like they've come up with a mistake. Centre field now, the women's All-Stars team will have another chance to attack the Indigenous All-Stars line. I think it's a really good opportunity to set up something good here, especially out wide, because the All-Stars team do have really fast wingers, and I think it's going to be a really good opportunity for them to utilise that. No better spot to attack than in centre field. Come outside Zahara Tamara. Puts a step on, then goes almost straight through the line. Beautiful run there from Tamara. As Bremner waits now for the ball, they go down to the left-hand side. Cutting back across field now is Gray. Gray steps nicely, gets a pass away. I oh, mean, she's monstered in defence. That was great work from Talia Hunter coming over the top with Simone Smith really bending her back. Now they come to the left-hand side. Nice short pass here onto Kunst. And the co-captain is brought down short of the line. Back to the right-hand side now. Nice short pass, gets it away. Good defence here from the Indigenous All-Stars team. Braley tried to get the pass away, but she couldn't get the ball down there, Gray. They come out to the left. Hands been in there in the play. Knocked down, and there's going to be a penalty here to the Women's All-Stars team. Caught offside there around the ruck, and that's six more tackles in this oppressive heat for the Indigenous All-Stars team to hold out the opposition. Still nil all here. Nine minutes gone. 39 degrees out there at the moment on a Wobbigal country, and the ball goes to ground. The penalty now, here comes the opportunity. Who do you see is the likely uh, try scorer here, Tanisha? Um, I definitely see, I think, still out wide, I can see in the setters, there's a bit of space out there, so I definitely think sending it wide can create some really good stuff for the All-Stars girls. They come out to the left-hand side now. He's stunning. Nice long pass. Oh, that's a brilliant tackle from Pilly coming out of the line. The offload's there, though. Cook comes down the left-hand side. They come across nicely in defence. Some beautiful work they're tackling. Savannah Connors came up also in there with Davis Welsh. 
Come back to the open side now. Studden, she steps off the right. No way through the line that time for Studden. Candy Kennedy came up with a Lende to make the tackle. They go spread to the wide now, then she comes back inside. No way through there for Cody House. Five metres away from the try line. Got to see them spread the ball here, the women's All-Stars team. Now they go out wide. Kick across field from Studden. There's plenty of space out wide. Taken nicely on the chest that time by Tamara. She gets the pass away. Now it comes back. Still an opportunity. There's a bit of space now. They can get the ball away. Charging for the line there. No way through for Gray as she's pushed back. Right in front of the post. This defence, fantastic here for the Indigenous team. Last tackle on the left. And Steph Hancock just can't hold. In fact, it's Eliana Walton. Can't hold on to the football. And what about the defence there from the Indigenous All-Stars team? That was great. And that's definitely, I definitely think that's something that's win, wins game is defence. Um, and I think that, like, having three sets on your line in this heat, I think the Indigenous girls have done really, really well. They just need to get out of their half now. Probably not the best kick there from Maddie Studden, but watch for her kicking game. She's got one of the best in rugby league. And at uh, that time, really, the Indigenous All-Stars team were just able to set their line, come back, and they have a, a nice motto going into this clash, the All-Stars team, the Indigenous team, and that is all in. The girls are all in for each other. And now they find themselves a penalty here for a high tackle, and this will help them get out of their own end of the field. Britt Braley there, the lady on screen. In fact, it was Gray that came up with the high tackle on Lavina Phillips. Watch for Lavina Phillips too, the number six for the Indigenous All-Stars team. Anywhere near the opposition's try line, she will get her hands on the ball five times out of the six. She loves it around the try line, Lavina Phillips. On the attack now come the Indigenous All-Stars team. They'd love to find themselves further upfield. They have been camped down here for almost uh, the entire first part of this quarter. There's Molly O'Connell, the national Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion from uh, Toowoomba, out near, out near Thargaminda, she's originally from. Had a nice chat with her today as well. Riley now at dummy half, tries to spread the ball out wide. This time it's with Samartha Leisha, the mother of five. The uh, oldest of 10 years of age and also five-year-old twins. And no doubt the family of Samartha Leisha are very proud including her five kids watching on today. Here they come now, the kick from Phillips out of dummy half. Ball goes back, Bremner puts another one down now. She's really struggling with her hands at the back. The pressure comes up and that's fantastic pressure from the Indigenous All-Stars team. Running out there, really putting the pressure on was young Sarah Field, the number 16, just 17 years of age. Started playing at the tender age of five years of age, the girl from Emu Park, Yapoon. She's uh, there, she is the lady with the headgear. Some nice work, Amber Pilly was in there as well to put the pressure on. But Sarah Field, just 17 years of age, the proud mum Debbie was there today to present her with her hat. And how about that? Fantastic stuff from the young 17-year-old. That was such great defence from the Indigenous girls. Um, and I know that throughout their whole training camps and stuff, Dean um, really focused on defence, which I think was which is really great and you can see it in this game. Well, now they get a chance to show what they have in attack as Leisha plays the ball now. Just 15 metres away. Slow play the ball here for the girls. Phillips, there she's touching the ball again. Nice work from Davis Welsh. Steps off the left. They've got some dangerous steppers in this team. Holding down the play. That time was Kunst. And she's penalised. Tries to slow the play down. She realises that her team is under pressure here from the Indigenous All-Stars. I definitely think this is such a great opportunity now for the girls. Having the first really go on their line. Well, here's Livingston. Ran the ball up forward, and I think it was Kunst again who's penalised once more. That's two from the co-captain, two penalties, and they might just have a word with you here, the referee. We might see if he's got something to say. There they are. The girls just getting their warnings there. The co-captain, Steph Hancock, coming out as well. Two real superstars of Australian women's rugby league. They've led the way at Jillaroo level for many, many years. They go now on the attack through Phillips. She spreads the ball out wide. What's out there was Bo De La Cruz out there on the field, that second receiver. He pops the ball short now as O'Connor will play the ball. Now they go to the right-hand side. No way through the line that time. Jasmine Allende will play the football. Now they go back short to the left-hand side, trying to push away over his Livingston. No way through the middle here for the Indigenous All-Stars team. Centre field, they've got options both sides. 
Slow again. Oh, Becker Riley does well to get that ball back. Here's Phillips. Throws the pass out the back for field. Finds Pilly. Pilly tries to step through and spin around, but the ball comes out the back. Equally good defence from the women's All-Stars team to stop the Indigenous team from getting over the line. Tell you what, we've got some fantastic defence here on display today, Tanisha. Yeah, we definitely do, and that's so important. And it's great to see that the girls have really stepped up with their defence this year. 24 to 4, the women's All Stars team defeated the Indigenous All Stars team last year. The only try scorer, Libby Cook Black, for the Indigenous All Stars team, not here tonight. There are plenty of players are out from this year's Indigenous All Stars team, but as you can see, a great crop of young players come through to replace them who are up for this task this evening. Almost ready for our quarter break here at the moment as we hear the siren in the background. No way through the line for the women's All Stars. And great to see the pride on her face and hear it in her voice today. Second quarter underway in the women's All-Stars match for 2017. And it is Selena Tranter who brings it back for the women's All-Stars team first up. We've seen some strong defence here today. And uh, once the girls start to tire a little bit as this match in this huge heat takes shape and takes form on their bodies, you'll see the ball thrown a little bit out by those speedy players out there on the field. Definitely, and I think that's when it's a good opportunity to keep them close, get your forwards going, and then spread it out the back. Renee Kuntz has been heavily involved in defence and now taking the ball down the left-hand side. You know, a dummy half, Sarah Walker there in the pink headgear. The ball goes out now to Brigginshaw. Oh, great defence. Well read there by Talia Hunter, who came up and pulled off the bell ringer that time on Sam Bremner, who's shaken from that tackle. Talia actually is debuting this year as well, which is really great to see, as are a lot of the Indigenous All-Star girls. Last tackle now coming for the women's team. See Bo Dela Cruz slow to get up around the ruck there as the kick comes in from Tranter. Bounces just in front of Davis Welsh. You see her stepping plenty as she gets through Davis Welsh. Nice bit of work. Just want to send a big shout out to her dad, Paulie Davis, who's uh, not well at the moment. Really send her best wishes out to your brother and for a speedy recovery from your time in hospital recently. Here is Hunter now, plays the football. Back to the open side. No way through at the moment there for Molly O'Connell. The women's All-Stars team, they're really pushing up hard in defence. Getting outside, trying to scoot through the middle, but there was absolutely no way through that time. That was for Emily Young, the young Toowoomba product. Now they come down the right-hand side. Leisha, there's no way through for her that time. Last tackle now for the Indigenous All-Stars team. Young gets out from dummy half. She's the last tackle. She hasn't realised it's the last. And it's going to be a hand over here now. The Women's All-Stars team standing up in defence. They'll have the football 30 metres out from their own end of the field. Still nil all here in the Women's All-Stars clash for 2017. And I think it's really important that we have either the older figures in the team or our halves calling that and saying, like, letting everyone know that it's the last play and we need to get it to our kickers. Here's the chance to work the football upfield for the women's All-Stars team. Selena Tranter, busy since she's been on the field. Good run there from Isabel Kelly, coming in from the wing to take a bit of pressure off the forwards. Down this short side now. Nice run. It's Karina Brown coming all the way over from the right wing. She'll burn plenty of fuel just even getting back into position after that run here on the left-hand side. Now they spread it to the right-hand side. Oh, nice shot over the top there from Kennedy. Came out to really put the big hit on. And Selena Tranta felt that one. Nothing out of the ordinary for Candy either. <laughs> He's starting now, spreads it wide to Brigginshaw. Beautiful short pass on to Hancock, who goes through. Sarah Field, the 17-year-old, brings her down. Beautiful defence. Last tackle now down the right-hand side. Tries to turn the ball back on the inside, but Brigginshaw can't get it away. And just like the Indigenous All-Stars team, the women's All-Stars team turn the football over meekly on the last tackle in an attacking position. Really have to do more than that on the last tackle options for both these two teams. And no doubt the heat is not only affecting them physically, but also mentally today. Definitely. I think we have Talia Hunter over the back. I think she might have just a bit of a head collision. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on Talia there out the back uh, on the left-hand side. As you saw, a nice run there from field. Here's Pilly coming over from the right-hand side to take the run up forward. She's got a bit of space to the centre. There's a nice run there coming out of the line from Emily Young. and She's earned her team a penalty for offside. Nice work here from the Indigenous All-Stars team. And there you see Talia there just shaking off the cobwebs from that one. But she looks OK there for the Indigenous All-Stars team. It's going to take a lot more than that to bring her off the field. 
That's so true. Here's Caitlin Moran. And as you can see, uh, not only can she kick the ball to the sideline from the, the penalty, but she, uh, we've seen her kick plenty of goals as well from the sideline in the past. I think, I think she did that for the Gillaroos last year in a game of rugby league. So plenty of talent out there. One of, the only girl on the Indigenous All-Stars team to take part in last week's uh, All-Stars. Oh, we've got a bad injury here. It looks for Candy Kennedy. Oh, and she's really not happy down there at the moment. She's screaming in pain. The poor girl who's been so fantastic today. And you can see the trainer out there on the field really calling for some support. So that's very sad work there for Candy Kennedy. Her, her dad, William Bubba Kennedy, here watching on too. No doubt will be uh, quite upset about seeing his daughter out there injured in that tackle. And that's what happens in rugby league, unfortunately, Tanisha. Injuries can happen in these big games. Definitely, they sure do, and I would know. Um, but, yeah, no, I think it's... Um yeah, that's a really tough one, but the girls need to refocus and regather. Um, but yeah, it's really unfortunate for Candy. The beauty of um, the injuries, though, if there are any such thing, is that there's a lot of great people on hand here and great medics here to support the girls in case of in the injury. And you can see the disappointment there on Dean Witters. Jasmine Allende there also sitting down. She's had some injuries in her career as well, Jazzy. And uh, you can see what appears to be a, a badly injured lower leg injury here for Candy Kennedy. And I think we're doing our best here to try and avoid showing you viewers at home the, the severe intent here of this injury. It's just very, very sad for the youngster. You see the girls are sitting down here and enjoying what has been a great game so far, but an injury here to Candy. As you can see, the, the girls now on the women's All-Stars team is taking a look and uh, trying to get some fluids into their body as well. You can see they're really taking a, a look here at Candy Kennedy. And there's the women's All-Stars. Ben Cross there, the assistant coach of the team, taking a look at the girls. And we may have a look at this uh, tackle on Candy Kennedy. And, uh, maybe it's a... We're hearing maybe it's a knee injury for Candy Kennedy. And I'll tell you what, if you are a little bit squeamish, maybe it's the time for you to look away. But we are going to show this replay of uh, the injury to Candy Kennedy. As you see there, see the right knee. Oh, pops right under that right knee. You can see that's that's probably as bad as a, a right knee injury that you can see. Buckled right underneath her. And there may be a few ligaments done in there, both from the ACL side and on the PCL side. It's... That's a, that's a very, very serious injury there to young Candy Kennedy. And we do apologise uh, if you are a little bit squeamish. That's why I gave you the warning before showing that replay. You see the girls, they're really trying to keep their spirits up. That's one of their great girlfriends there on the ground who's been injured there with that knee injury. That's, you know, at the start of a season as well, that's most likely the, the full season out for Candy Kennedy in her 2017 rugby league season. And she really has worked hard. Like the season leading up to All Stars, like I know how much, how much weight, like weight she has lost because she's just worked so hard with personal training and her diet that she's changed. I had a chat with her today actually, and she was telling me all about it. And I know, like myself, all the girls in her family would be so proud of her for how far she's come. And it's really a shame that that this has happened to her. Yeah, that's um, very sad there for for Candy and. It's true, the preparation that these girls have been putting in in the lead up to the Indigenous All-Stars, Women's All-Stars clash, it is uh, very sad here for the young lady. But as we look here at the, the team getting together, both teams you can see in huddles, the Indigenous All-Stars team there, Dean Feeney doing a bit of talk in the yellow jersey, been heavily supportive of all the girls in this Indigenous women's team. Coming together, see Lauren Motlop just joining the team there, and there's Beck Young, the captain of the team. Next to young Emily Young. No relation there, the two girls. But they are certainly proud players. Nakia Davis Welsh right there next to her. Just 21 years of age to Emily Young. Spoke with her and her dad, Alec, about playing in the first women's all stars match. And uh, Alec was very proud of his uh, young girl. Hannah's down on the sideline for NITV. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, I just had a chat to the coach, Dean Witters, about what he thinks is going on in the field. And he says that this might be a dislocation rather than a fracture or a broken leg because when you break or you fracture your, your leg, you kind of lay there and you're in pain, but you can't really move. And the, 
the sounds that we're hearing coming from her, it's, it sounds like a, a, a dislocation more than a fracture. Obviously, we need to get that checked out, but that's what the coach reckons it is. It's really disappointing for the Indigenous team. Thanks very much for Hannah and giving us that insight of uh, comments from Dean Witters, the man there on the right of screen. One of the real legends of Indigenous Rugby League, but not only on the field, what he's doing off the field. Originally from Narwin up in Armadale region in uh, the uh, northern part of New South Wales, but also he's an incredible man uh, in the Redfin community at the moment, the work he's doing with the men's team on the field and off the team, the great mentoring he's doing. She's Steve Driscoll there, the trainer on the left. As they uh, take Candy off, she's got the painkiller there in the hands and it looks like uh, she's hopefully feeling a little bit better than she was only five minutes ago. Yeah, it is a, bad, it is a sad loss for the girls because Candy did, does make such a big impact on the field. Not only on the field, but the support she gives off the field as well um, to her sisters is incredible. And that, that will be missed, but I have no doubt that she'll still support the girls. You see a bit of concern shown there by team manager Katrina Fanning, who's showing concern for one of her young players as we return to the action here now 19 and a half minutes gone in our clash still nil all what a game we have on hand for us as riley gets out from dummy half in fact it's young out there in the middle finds o'connell who's brought to ground now 40 meters away from the try line we come back to the right hand side now through beck young she's picked up and slammed into the ground that's some great defense there from the women's all-stars team Back down to the open left-hand side now. He's Smith. She goes herself, Simone Smith. Gets through the line. Then throws the long pass out. Hits the ground. It's been picked up, though, by Hunter. She comes back in field and is finally brought to ground. Last tackle now from the Indigenous All-Stars team. Goes through the dummy. And then the kick comes over the top cross field. There is Studden to wait. Let's it bounce. The ball comes back. Play on it. It's a try to the Indigenous All-Stars team. And it's young Emily Young, is it? No, it's Samar Felicia. The number 19, we see who's come down with the try, but incredibly was allowed to bounce. Now they're giving the pat on the back, I think, to Samar Felicia. It is the number 19. The mother of five has scored the try from Queensland. What about this? It was Simone Smith who challenged them on the right side. Brigginshaw just held onto her. And then it was Hunter came back inside. Caitlin Moran kicks the ball across field. And Maddie Studden, she'll want this over again, allows it to bounce, goes back, and Leisha picks the ball up and puts it down. A fortunate try there for the Indigenous All-Stars team. And that is the risk you do take with letting the ball bounce, um, unfortunately, but great play by the Indigenous girls, especially coming back from just losing Candy Kennedy to come up like that um, is really amazing. And the mother of five couldn't be prouder, I bet. What a great story here. The first try scorer, Samar Felicia, and now we mentioned the kicking abilities of Caitlin Moran. And here she is. The current lone Jillaroo from uh, the Indigenous team. That's in the nines variety, of course. Um, will be a different story in the 13-a-side competition. Here's Caitlin Moran. 20 metres in from touch. Strikes it nicely towards the post. And it goes straight through. Six points to nil. The Indigenous All-Stars team lead the women's All-Stars here at McDonald Jones Stadium on a Wobbegal country in Newcastle. And coach Dean Witters will be happy with the performance of his girls. And as Tanisha mentioned, bouncing back there after that knee injury to Candy Kennedy and the girls enjoying themselves here and Becca Riley giving us a nice little NITV symbol. I think she's been on TV a few times here on NITV. Yes, always cracking jokes too. Here's the try scorer, Samar Felicia. Straight and hard, I tell you what, she is. Pumped and bouncing, ready to play some great footy today. Motlop gives the pass away to O'Connell, who bounces away from one. And she'll get to her stomach plenty of times, the uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion. He's Beck Young, the skipper, comes forward. Well, it looks like a bit of a head clash here for a couple of girls. And it's the co-captains who may have come together here. Steph Hancock, oh, she looks in a bit of a daze there, is she, Steph Hancock? And also... Maybe Renee Kunz, the other player, the two co-captains coming together. You see shaken up a little bit too. It looks like it is. It is Kunz there on the left of screen, the 13, and over the top comes the co-captain on the left-hand side. Oh, no, it looks like maybe it's the opposition player there on the underneath. The first up and made the tackle. Either way, there's been a nice little bump on the head there for Kunz. She's been great in the game so far with her aggression, so hopefully um, 
but she can come back for this one. There's a little egg popping up there on the right-hand side there for Renee Kunst. I'll tell you what, they are leaving nothing in the tank out there. Both teams going hard at each other. It means so much for them in this great clash here in Newcastle. We've got the uh, unlimited interchange out there, so I'd be making sure she comes straight from the field. Give her a little breather. Make sure she clears the head and they may maybe even give her a bit of a concussion test as well just to make sure she's okay. But definitely uh, that cheekbone and up the top of the head there. Very ginger for Renee Kunst. Not too far away from the halftime break here in what's been a pretty gruelling clashy 6 0 Indigenous All Stars is Lauren Motlock. Nice step off the right foot. She's tackled on the halfway line. Come down to the right-hand side now. Here's Phillips. Phillips puts the kick over the top. Bremner waits back. She's had an off day. This time she takes it nicely on the chest and then comes back across field. Nice bit of work there coming across from Bremner. Here's Brown ducking out from dummy half. She's really done well to come over on that right-hand side to help out. Here's Isabel Kelly now and earns a team a penalty. Nice work there from Kelly. They've got around about a minute left on the clock. So the World All-Stars team, if they want to crack the tally on the scoreboard here in this first half, they've really got to get things moving down the field. Yeah, definitely. And I think it'll be a really good opportunity for the girls to start taking it forward now, getting close to their line, just over the 40 mark. So we'll see how they go. On the attack now come the women's All-Stars team. Waiting for his walk, and then she gives the pass away. Nice charge up through the middle. Nice work there from Hancock. They go down the short side. He's a beautiful run down the right-hand side now. Looks like from Tasman Gray. And she's brought down now, Gray. Moran just holding on a little bit too long there with Davis Welsh. Now with Brigginshaw. She throws the pass across field. Tranter, she's brought to ground. She's been busy since coming on the field too. Selena Tranter for the Women's All-Stars. Back to the left, nice long pass out wide. Studden out the back to Bremner. Bremner finds nice work there on the hands of Cook. Siren goes in the background. Good defence up from Savannah Connors who came in off a wing. And a tremendous first half of football where we've had some serious injuries too. One there to Candy Kennedy in that right knee. And we're about to get underway here in the second half for 2017. And Maddie Studden gets us underway. Running to the right, to the left of screen. Now the women's All-Stars team as Leisha goes up solidly there forward for the Indigenous team. Two more 15-minute quarters to go as Motlop charges forward. Good defence there from Braley coming in to make the tackle along there with Walton. Back through the middle part of the field now. Allende charges forward. I definitely think the... Um, All-Stars girls have stepped up their defence, especially up the field by putting three in the tackle, and I think that's really important to try and keep them up here as well. And the players, uh, I guess, who can really combat that when we get a bit of width out wide for the Indigenous girls, players like Simone Smith, Caitlin Moran, they're the high steppers for this Indigenous team. Nice kick downfield here as Bremner chases back here on the wing. Looks like they may have had a little bit of a swap there for Karina Brown going to the fullback role, and and Bremner going out to the right wing. So a bit of a change up there from coach Rob Ruff. Good solid tackle coming across there from Talia Hunter to put the pressure on. A lot of work to do to work the football upfield here for the women's All-Stars team. Zahara Tamara plays the football. Trying to duck out and scoop. Whoa, coming across, big attack with crosses her over the sideline. That is a big charge there from Isabel Kelly, who was met defensively strong. Beck Young came across as well, the captain for the Indigenous All-Stars team to put pressure on. And just like that, there's a scrum 20 metres out for the Indigenous team to attack. I had a chat with Beck Young today and she was really happy with the whole process of the girls and how they were going. So, yeah, I know she's really proud of the girls and has been really excited for this match for some weeks now. Talia Hunter, she had a bit of a bump on the head in the, the first half, but you wouldn't know it from taking that tackle front on. And Davis Welsh came across as well. They're really up for this task, yet to win this clash. They are the Indigenous women's team. That man's had a lot to do with the growth of this team over the years, and certainly put a lot of time in over this weekend. And that 6-0 lead, it's looking very good at the moment for the Indigenous women's team. Scrum fed and won that time 
by Becca Riley. They spread the ball out wide now. Leash has been heavily involved standing out wide. It's 20 metres away centre field. They come back to the left now. Here's Motlock. Tries to find a hole into the line. Bends it back. Look for the offload, but Cook brings it down with Braley. It's five metres away now. They come out to the left. Here's Phillips. Nice long pass. Smith steps off that left foot. Brought down. Nice tackle. Brigginshaw underneath. A nice bit of work over the top it was from Simone Carpenter. Here's Phillips. Goes to the line. A little bit slow there at the moment. And she was easy pickings for Cook and Braley. Here's the ball spread now from Riley. Finds Young. Young steps off the right, but there's no way through. They'll have to spread the ball a little bit more here, the Indigenous team. Last tackle coming now. Here's Riley goes out to the right-hand side. Phillips crossfield. Oh, there's plenty of space. They just have to pick it up and go over. Steps off the right, comes back in field. Gets to the line nicely. Beautiful work there. Savannah Connors, the youngster up in Varel, Tingaway, scores the try in the corner. Libby Cook-Black watching on there from the sideline. And even GI, pretty happy to see that one. Nice work there from Savannah Connors to score the try. She was the star of the Murray Carnival up in Queensland last year at the end of September. And she's on display here with a great try in the All-Stars Clash. She definitely is. And I, Savannah actually won the player of the tournament up in the Murray Knockout, which was really great. And it's so great to see her on the field with all the other young girls coming through. And we have such great role models out there, I feel, today. Um, that they're setting a really great path for these girls. Yeah, there was determination, but let's put it also down to the vision there of Lavina Phillips, a real veteran of New South Wales Women's Rugby League. And uh, Phillips, the number six on her back, put the ball on the boot, and uh, they were lining up to score the try out on the right-hand side. Nice to see the boys here too, getting here early to support the women's team. Jack Bird there in front. Jolly Thompson does great work in community. Latrell Mitchell left of screen. Dane Gagai too, he knows this area up here in Newcastle quite well. And there's Pete uh, with the bucket hat in the back. So the boys all keen. Leilani Latu plays his footy with the Penrith Panthers. Scored a try in last year's All-Stars match himself. So all here today, getting here nice and early to watch the girls play. They've been uh, in camp supporting each other all week. Here's the kick now coming from Caitlin Moran. 22 metres back, five in from touch. He strikes it beautifully, straight to the post. Just goes to the left-hand side of the uprights. Kick miss there from Caitlin Moran. But the Indigenous All-Stars team lead 10 points to nil. Well, there's a, a nice shot there of Candy Kennedy up on crutches. Got the ice there on the knee. And you can see there's Bubba Kennedy too, the old man, just looking right of screen. Plenty of NRL matches for that man there. Just gave her a nice little pat and a kiss there on the cheek for his daughter. Here comes uh, the kickoff now with Beck Young going forward. Oh, what about shot going in there too over the top? They've had a bit of a talking to. No doubt Steph Hancock back behind the line was having plenty to say to her team. Here's the work now too. I think Mollop's doing such a great job too. She's been doing some really good hit-ups um, the past few runs, so let's hope they keep coming. She's got real speed to the line too, doesn't she, Lauren Mollop? She does. Ball just bouncing. Phillips lets it go. Leisha picks it up and brings it back to the centre part of the field. We might just uh, go down the sideline and see if we can find out just a little bit more about Candy Kennedy. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, Candy Kennedy has a dislocated patella, just as coach Dean Witters had suspected earlier on with all of that screaming. Now, I have an injury update as well with Renee Cunt. She was taken away for a head injury assessment after that head knock we saw earlier with co-captain Steph Hancock. Now, her head injury assessment is fine, but she has fractured her cheekbone, so she'll be okay in the end, but she sure will be sore for a while longer. Oh, thanks very much for that, Dr. Hollis, uh, down on the sidelines, getting all the updates from uh, the injured girls out there, not just suffering with the heat, but some of the bumps and bruises that they've popped today. This has been one hell of a clash out there in the middle at the McDonald Jones Stadium this afternoon. Not sure whether we, we may see Renee Kunz come back. She's a tough character with a fractured cheekbone, though. It's a tough ass to get her to come back out on the field. On the attack now, the women's All-Stars team. They come down the right-hand side. Nice bit of play. Bounces away Karina Brown, playing in the fullback role. At the moment, she's pushed up into the centre to take the tackle. They go to the open side now. He's Brigginshaw. Throws the short pass. Stepping in nicely to come through the back, though. There's no way through there for Eliana Walton. And she'll be brought down just two metres away from the uprights. They go to the open side now. He's Stutton. Watch for that step. Oh, the short kicking game will come into play, too. Great tackle, Beck Riley. Last one now. Here's the kick from Braley. Is it played out, though? 
It's play on though into the hands of the Indigenous All-Stars team. Lavina Phillips dives on the loose ball. It's another good set of defence there from the Indigenous All-Stars team. Yeah, and I think that's really important throughout the whole game and their, their defence has been really great and it's what's winning them this match pretty much. Some more work across the field, some defence coming out strongly out of the line. Cody House was the player putting the pressure on defensively. This is some good work from Pilly once again coming up from the centre position. Taking a lot of pressure off the girls from the sidelines. Here's Phillips, knows a nice short pass. No way through there for Livingston. Takes the tackle. Here's the last tackle now for the girls. Comes across field, Phillips inside the 40, kicks the ball back across field, centre field now. Brown goes back to clean up and does so nicely. 30 metres out there, runs across field, trying to pick up some support with some great defence out of the line there from Nakia Davis Welsh. Brings down the opposite. And you can see a couple of the um, All Stars girls lagging a bit at the back, walking, so maybe they're getting a bit tired, and I think the Indigenous girls are really utilising that as well. Yeah, they are really struggling. There's this nice run out of dummy half to try and take the pressure off that time it was Sam Bremner. He's been playing out on the right wing here in the second half. Comes in to take the pressure off. Another run out of dummy half. This time it's from Isabel Kelly. Missed out on that possible opportunity in the first half. The ball knocked out of her hands. She tried to score a try in the first half. Busy short side here for the World All-Stars team. The Women's All-Stars team, that is. And the ball goes over the sideline. Ten metres out from the Indigenous All-Stars team line. And they'll pack down a scrum. And they'll all enjoy this breather with the heat. Late 30s here in Newcastle all day. And uh, no doubt the girls are doing it tough out there in the middle. Yeah, we can def definitely see some hands on hips and some calls for water. So that just shows how really hot it is out there. We're just seeing uh, they've got the, the break here at the scrum. So I'm not sure you can make these changes here at the scrum or whether they'll allow these changes. Unlimited interchange, I think it's probably OK at, uh, with the girls playing their footy. Uh, they are waiting for the scrum to pack down. And once it comes, Beck Young will come from the field and make the change there with Simone Smith. Not often you see a number eight replaced by a number seven. <laughs> come together, wait for it. Wait, wait in. Out. There's the scrum. Fed and one there, Bo Delacruz going on there to play in the half row. And Lavina Phillips at the number six takes the ball up forward. Showed some good vision in this match today. Here's Leisha going forward, pushing away. Hook comes back at her and brings it to ground. Been a couple of good clashes between those two girls, but to win the tackles, the ball's reefed away and a penalty here to the Indigenous All-Stars team, and that just piggybacks them up the field. That's the pressure valve release they need with the heat coming down here this afternoon at McDonald Jones Stadium. The girls are now as Molly O'Connell there in the number 12. And a penny takes the tap and goes up forward. We need to be all inside. It was Cody House, uh, the lady who ran up out of line. She's really stood up, hasn't she, for this women's all-stars team, the number 11, Cody House. Yeah. Renee couldn't off the field. She's really had to step up in that defensive role. Here's Leisha again. What a real standout she's been. Very busy today. Out to the left now through Phillips. Up through the middle again through Livingston. That's a nice run, bounces away from a couple, and she's finally brought to ground. Ball comes out the left now, Dela Cruz. Throws the ball wide, nice and steps. Simone Smith goes through the line. Oh, and then the ball comes away, trying to get the offload away. Simone Smith comes up with a mistake. But we've seen her take the line on a couple of times. She's a very dangerous footballer. Yeah, she definitely is, and I think that comes from her touch background as well. She's played for Australia in touch. I know I played with her a fair few times, and just her footwork and her skill is unbelievable and definitely um, really good value in this team. Certainly in the back end as we get into the fourth quarter coming up soon, we may see Simone Smith take them on a few more times. Here's some nice uh, work up through the middle. Amelia Cook. She'll play the football just before the halfway line. Here's Braley, tries to spread the ball left to get something going. Tamara passes the football on as well. And nice tackle there on Cody House, brings her to ground. Here's Studden, goes long cross field to Brigginshaw. Oh, intercepted almost there by Simone Smith. She was right there on the football, but just couldn't hold on to it. 
And I'll tell you what, it would have been four points coming the way of the Indigenous All-Stars team if she holds on to that football. Yeah, and I definitely think the Indigenous girls have been told to rush up as well and put as much pressure, and it's, de it's obviously working. It's just a shame Simone couldn't get a, another hand on that one. Could have been try number three. Just a bit of work there as the girls get the massage on the side. Uh, Steph Hancock, the co-captain here, has three goals riding into the ground, finally bringing her down. Now pushing in for the left side, TJ Green coming on from the right wing. Very slow to get to their feet there. Molly O'Connell defensively, very strong. Another tackle low again from O'Connell. She has been busy. A few girls from Toowoomba out there tonight, really excelling for this Indigenous All-Stars team. There's a great one through the middle there from Tasman Gray. She's troubled them a few times today as well, along with the likes of Selena Tranter. In fact, that time it was Simone Carpenter. Now they come back on the inside, a nice inside pass. One to go! Sure that there's no way through the line. Great defence again, last tackle. Come to the shorthand side now. Brigginshaw puts the kick more and allows it to go over the sideline in goal. And it'll come back for a 20-metre restart. Once again, the Indigenous All-Stars team place, placing a high price on their try line. Still no score against them. They lead 10 points to nil. Yeah, I think they should be really proud of their defence for the last three quarters. It's been so great and everyone is so tenacious with that ball and when they don't have the ball when they're tackling. And it's so great to see and it's such a good game to watch. In the middle. There's Lavina Phillips just showing the slowing the pace down, showing all the experience of a young lady who's been there before. A minute out now from our three-quarter break. And here's Pilly. We haven't seen her in much space today. It's been a pretty tight, compact game, this one, but she has been quite busy up the middle. Here's Allende. She's a very good offloader as well of the ball, Jasmine Allende. But it's been a very strong defensive game on both sides. Here's O'Connell. Doing most of the defence. This time tucks the ball under the arm to get a few metres for her team. Back to the right side now. Nice short pass again. Phillips to Livingston. We've seen it a few times today. Now they go to the left-hand side. Here's Allende once more. Oh, good defence coming across. Cook was the first player there. And a good shot came over the top as well. A time from Steph Gallagher. Here's the kick deep downfield. Getting back is Karina Brown. She's got plenty of toe. She gets into space. And Sarah Field, the youngster, comes across to bring it to ground. Fourth and final quarter here for the Women's All-Stars for 2017. And it's the Women's All-Stars who get their first crack at the football. And Steph Gallagher, she's come on and made a couple of nice runs since coming on the field and earned her team a penalty, laying down just a little bit too long there. Sarah Field and also Beck Young. One of the veterans of the team with the baby of the side there in Sarah Field just laying on too long. Ten points to nil, the Indigenous All-Stars team lead and the Women's All-Stars, you heard from Sam Bremner what they have to do. They've really got to try and shake things up. Just 15 minutes, not a lot of time when you're down by two tries. Who are the players you think will stand up for this Women's All-Stars team if there are any chance of getting the points on the board? Um, well, I definitely know that Maddie Stardin always has the ball in her hand, and she was a really great player for them last week at the Nines. Um, I think it's going to be up to their forwards as well to get them up the field to create that opportunity for the girls to create some plays. Well, it's been one hell of a defensive line set by the Indigenous All-Stars team. They've really defended well. He's Braley who tries to get out, ducks under a high one there, and field comes over the top. Three in the tackle to bring it to ground. Centre field now, Brigginshaw goes to the right, throws a nice dummy, gets through the line of Morin, pass away to Hancock out wide. She finds a pass now onto Carpenter, another offload as well now onto Gallagher. Nice work and now she's pushed over the sideline. They've done really well there, the women's All-Stars team, but what about the Indigenous All-Stars team and their defence? They are up for the challenge this afternoon. They definitely are, and you know what I think is really great, and I remember when I played in the Indigenous team and it was all about support. And that's what they're showing out on the field and I think that's really great um, just having each other's back in defense and also in attack and that was pretty much um, just saved a try. TJ Green in fact it was out on this right side and Nikita Davis Welsh Beck Young in there Caitlin Moran came across you can see our pump Bo Dela Cruz is there pushing the girls over the sideline. 
Not only do they want to win this game, but gee, they'd love to win it to nil. Still yet to defeat this women's All-Stars since the concept began. This would be a huge victory for the girls who come in with the motto of all in before this match. Well, the ball getting a little bit loose there in the hands. Just still holding on nicely. There it was, looked like a nice run there at the back from Nakia Davis-Welsh. Savannah Connors now has her hands on the ball. And Eliana Walton, bit of a size difference there, and Walton wins that battle. Working the football out now is Lauren Motlock, who's been very good bringing the ball back to the line, but this time she's picked up and driven back. Some nice defence in there. Nice work there it was from Simone Carpenty, leading there in the number 15 defensively. Walton again in defence there on Young. Getting up just a little bit ginger after that one, Beck Young. Left-hand side now. Here's a nice pass from Riley on to O'Connell. And O'Connell just sort of held back there. And I'll tell you what, she's got plenty of balance with that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu background. Last tackle now. Joel Cruz just gets rid of it. Hot potato stuff now as Riley gives it to Davis Welsh. Puts up the midfield bomb. And Brown does well to get back and clean up for the women's All-Stars. And equally a good tackle there from Rebecca Riley. Yeah, and I think, and she's worked so hard this whole game, and I know whole this whole season leading up to this. So she definitely has earned her spot in this team. Ball comes loose there off the hands of Kelly, and it's play on now to the Indigenous All-Stars team. They lead 10 points to nil. Just 11 and a half minutes remaining here on the clock. Here's Livingston centre field. Nice run up the middle. Dean Witters, the coach, looks on. It'd be a proud moment for him if they could get up. Here's Sarah Field, the 17-year-old. She takes the tackle. Now it comes out to the left eye. Loose pass there goes. Moran goes back to clean up. She's got some nice steps as well. Then finds some space and finds Riley. If they can hold on and move it, he's Leisha. She goes out wide. Pilly finds the ball out wide now to Connors. Can't get on the outside. There is Stutton who gets some help and he's driven over the sideline by both Stutton and Kelly. And there the girls giving each other a nice pat on the back. Some great defence there as the ball was spread wide by the Indigenous All-Stars team. Yeah, and it'd be good to see this last 10 minutes just to see them All-Stars girls come together a little bit more, especially in defence, and cause turnovers for the Indigenous girls. It was really nice work there from Maddie Stutton to stand her up. And then Kelly came across uh, with a little bit more vicious intent in that tackle to bring her over the sideline. A little bit more of the mongrel they need, the women's All-Stars team, to really put it on a willing Indigenous All-Stars team today. There's a bit of a sloppy scrum there for the girls. And they'll be asked to re-feed the scrum here from Zahara Tamara, the number three. Get a ton out, get a ton out. Finally, the ball comes out the back of the scrum. He's Brigginshaw up through the middle. She has been dangerous at times. Love to see a few more girls run off her hip because I think she just might be the difference in the back end if they're a chance of coming back. Selena Tranta takes the ball forward, but the Indigenous All-Stars girls just getting up a little bit too fast there. Becca Riley being a little bit cheeky, as we know Becca can be. Giving away another 10 metres for just that extra bit of cheek. But she's, of course, there to try and make the tackle. And they're coming across defensively nicely was Brownie Livingston to make the tackle. They go to the left-hand side now. Sun really beams out hard here now in Newcastle. What I really think has been good in the, with the Indigenous girls is making sure they're getting someone down low to grab the legs and someone up high to wrap up the ball. What about a bit of really good. brilliant veteran play there from Lavina Phillips. Put a body in place, put the check on, and then one-on-one -on -one strip. Nicely done by Lavina Phillips. A huge play there with nine minutes remaining. See so the pass back on the inside, put a body on for the shot there on Walton, and came up with the football. Massive play at a big time there by Lavina Phillips. I was talking to the Lavina Phillips earlier today, actually, and she was really excited for the game and really excited for the girls that she had playing beside her. And she asked me to give a shout out to the um, the Clean Slate um, Without Prejudice program that Tribal Warrior run, which is by her dad, Shane Phillips. Big shout out to uh, my brother there, Shane Phillips in Redfern. He's up here, of course, in Newcastle. Coached the Redfern's team yesterday in that Interstate Challenge, which I've mentioned a few times. Saw his two boys run around on the field. His son, Kareel, the captain, and his youngest boy, Zeke, he's still only 17 years of age, played on the wing as well for Redfern. Big weekend for the Phillips family, as it always is when Indigenous Rugby League is on display. He's a young field. Ducking out is Talia Hunter. Oh, big tackle. 
coming across, really put the shoulder in again. Nice willing tackle that time it came in from Zahara Tamara. Tamara really put the shot on there, but as we've seen in the first half, I don't think much shakes up Talia Hunter. He's Pilly again. Really worked hard. Amber Pilly, when she gets a chance to tuck the ball under the arm, I think there might be a career in the back row for her in the not too distant future. Here's a long pass from Smith onto her cousin, Caitlin Moran, who play against each other at Curry Knockouts. Today they're playing together in the Indigenous All Stars. Moran gets away with that one. Knocked back as Steph Hancock has a bit of a laugh. He comes back on the last tackle now. He's a sloppy old kick there from Smith. Nicely taken, though, from the women's All-Stars team. And that was Gray, the number 12, going up for the ball. Is their chance now? They trail 10 points to nil, seven minutes on the clock. They've really got to try and score this try very soon, the women's All-Stars team. Oh, and a mistake. Unfortunate there as the ball comes to ground. She gets up there, Carpany. Shakes the head. She's pulled off some very nice tackles today, Simone Carpany, but this time can't hold on to the football. And that's definitely what the Indigenous girls need to do is utilise their mistakes um, as they're from their first try as well, just utilising on their mistakes. And I think the girls are really, yeah, grabbing two hands and running. See another shot there of Candy Kennedy. He's got a nice grin for us too. Oh, that's beautiful. She's got ice off the knee as well. So that looks, that's a very good sign, in fact. No ice on the knee. She's uh, getting into a bit of a power aid there. Next to Michelle Bailey, who's doing some great work within the NRL Indigenous Programs area. And uh, nice to see Candy with a smile on her face. And for those of you just joined us, she uh, badly injured her right knee, dislocation of the patella, the kneecap there in the, the first half. And uh, in the 19th minute, in fact, of the match, we saw Candy taken off on uh, the golf cart here from McDonald Jones. Here's Simone Smith again through the middle. Mentioned just how dangerous she can be when she tucks that ball under the arm and steps forward. Here's Jasmine Allende. You've always got to run off the back of Allende. She can get the offloads away. Centerfield now. Can the Indigenous All-Stars team put another try on the board? They lead 10-0. Smith again puts the kick in behind for Moran. Chases through. Green is there. Moran. Oh, and the ball just gets knocked down, I think, from Moran. Well, we're going to have a look here. And Such I thought a good chase that was by Moran. I thought it might have been a knock on here at the hands of Caitlin Moran. You see, just coming across, you see TJ Green is there, Moran's there. And there's Moran, yeah, just gets the hand to knock the ball forward. They've uh, unlucky a little bit there, the women's All-Stars team. It should be a 20-meter restart. Yeah, they definitely are unlucky with that one. And you could just see how aggressive she was to go get to that ball, and she's been like that the whole game, which is really great to see from Caitlin. Maddie starting with a restart. They may look for the short restart here. No one up at the front line, but they do go deep. Trailing 10 points to nil. There's under five minutes left remaining in this clash. Not a lot of opportunities left for them. Here's Molly O'Connell going across field. Been very impressed by O'Connell today defensively. Back to the line. Back to the line. She'll be asked just to go back and restart. Right, as Emily Young Hold. waits. Hold. The hooker coming off the bench from Toowoomba. And now Livingston. She's racked up a few hit-ups today, that's for sure, Livingston. Now to the short side, Young takes off. Gives the pass away. Nice hands out wide by Samartha Leisha. Scored the first try in this All-Stars match. Phillips now comes back to the open side through Pilly. They spread it wide now. He's Davis Welsh stepping nicely. No way through the line, though, for the fullback. Good quick play the ball, sees Young get out. They go to the left-hand side now. Dela Cruz, long pass for Moran. Beautiful bullet pass. Natalia Hunter, fantastic football. The Indigenous women's All-Stars team are in again. But put it down to the vision and hands of Bo De La Cruz to stretch them early. They're just playing so great, the girls. And the support, it comes back to that support that they have for each other. And Dean and both their captains should be so proud of how they've prepared the girls for this week because they're playing an unreal game. Smiles on the faces tell the story here for this Indigenous team. Dela Cruz scoots across. Beautiful pass there onto the chest of Moran, who equally threw a nice pass. And Talia Hunter, she's copped some bumps and bruises today. She saw Savannah score a try in the third quarter. And she said, anything you can do, I can do too. And scores down here on the left-hand side. And that grin is from ear to ear. What about the skills there from both girls? I think it's so unreal, and I feel like this Indigenous team is really utilising their younger players, which is so great to see. They're not hiding. No one's hiding. There's no place to hide on the footy field, and, yeah, everyone's getting really involved, and it's such a great game to watch. 
And you're, you're spot on there. You're talking, you see the mouth guard there too, showing the Aboriginal colours. Red, black and yellow on the mouth guard there of Talia Hunter. And it is absolutely true. Savannah Connors, a youngster too, uh, from Inverell, Tingaway, playing up there in Queensland competition. We saw Emily Young come off the bench, uh, do some great stuff around the ruck area. Sarah Field, so defensively strong, wearing the headgear in the number 16. The young players stepping up. And here's Caitlin Moore and through that last pass. We've seen an Allen from the sideline before. Comes in and strikes it nicely, but just fades away to the right-hand side. Missed kick there from Caitlin Moore. The Indigenous Women's All-Stars team with an unbeatable lead here at the moment. 14 points to nil with under, well, just under three minutes left remaining here in this All-Stars clash. Smiles all round. And there's a real big mob have turned out for this game to watch the women paying them the respects that they deserve in what's been a fantastic afternoon of footy here at the All-Stars Clash. Short kickoff here now for the girls. Moran goes up for it. Oh, takes a huge bump there too. There was, oh, she gets up too. Oh, she's got a few bumps there. Nice little red mark on the nose coming forward. But it was a willing clash. So it might have the player who she was going up against there too. It was uh, Ali Brigginshaw, the six, and also Kate Lamore and maybe just copped a little loose arm there off the side as Brigginshaw turned her body. Nice collision. I'll tell you what, both teams have put their bodies on the line today. She's probably better sitting up here with that yeah, I know. ankle of yours. <laughs> yes, that is so true, but they're all rough as guts, and it's so great to see. <laughs> you said that, not me. <laughs> oh, dear. What a great performance from the Indigenous Women's All-Stars team. We, we see those 14 points on the left of screen, but it's the zero on the right of screen that they'll be keen to hold on to here late in this game. They spread the ball early. Brown with the pace goes wide. Throws a nice pass away. Bremner back on the inside. They're stepping nicely through the middle, but there's no way through there for Isabel Kelly. Allende over the top and Sarah Field underneath. And I feel like Isabel Kelly, like she's she comes from a touch background. She's had so many great runs today. Here's a nice run up through the middle. Walton will play the ball. Can the Indigenous All-Stars team keep them to zero? They go to the left-hand side now. Nice short pass from Tamara. And the ball's play on as it goes backwards. Samara has it again. Phillips comes across defensively with Davis Welsh. And they bring it aground. Not too long to go to the end of this match. It goes short side. Nice quick play there. Gray. Allende comes across to help out. Oh, and even Limison comes in. That's all in, if ever I've seen it, from this team. Now they go the open side. Brigginshaw goes short. Walton again. Can she get the offload away? Finds Brigginshaw once more. They go long. He's cup and he spreads the ball. Now it goes out to Tranter. Tranter for the line and she scores the try. She's really deserved that Selena Tranter. Worked very hard for the women's All-Stars team. And they do get that late consolation try. Beautiful work there from Tranter, but it is all too little too late. The Indigenous All-Stars team have won for the very first time in this clash. It means so much to all the girls. And Tanisha Stanton, that is a picture worth a thousand words.